Microsoft has a version of Windows 11 that can fix a lot of the issues we have with Windows 11, as well as solve the upcoming problem of ending support for Windows 10 in October. So what's the catch? Let's get into it. Microsoft has a modified version of Windows 11 that addresses common user frustrations. These issues involve the absurd hardware requirements, pre-installed bloatware, the necessity of having a Microsoft account, and the frequency of updates after the Windows 11 experience. It's called Windows 11 IoT Enterprise LTSC. That's a mouthful, so for the remainder of this video, I'm going to refer to it as LTSC, which stands for Long-Term Servicing Channel. It is important to note there is another version that's not IoT, but for purposes of this video, this is the IoT version. Windows LTSC is a Microsoft-created Windows version intended for volume licensed customers, emphasizing stability and extended support. Think of it as another Windows edition similar to Home and Pro. However, unlike those versions designed for home computers, LTSC was developed and is marketed towards businesses. It even powers numerous Windows-based devices like point-of-sale systems in retail stores and restaurants, for example. Speaking of Windows 10 and 11, and licensing, check out today's sponsor. Are you using an unregistered version of Windows 11? Then you need to check out Keyspan.com. Keyspan offers a wide range of products including Windows 11, Windows 10, and even older versions like Windows XP. Need Office software? They got you covered with keys for Office 2019 and Office 2021. And here's the best part. You can save big with exclusive coupon codes by using my code RKT50 to get 50% off all Windows series. That means you can get Windows 11 Pro for less than $20. But wait, there's more. For Microsoft Office, use my code RKT62 to get a massive 62% off. Buying is super easy. Just add your chosen product key to your cart, apply the coupon code, and pay securely via PayPal or credit card. You'll receive your genuine activation key in no time. Once you have your product key, go back to the activation page, click on change product key, enter the product key you just purchased, and click activate. Be sure to check out keysfan.com. Until recently, LTSC was only available for Windows 10, but now we have a Windows 11 version of it. What makes this version different from the standard Home or Pro versions of Windows is the fact that this version of Windows was designed with long-term support and stability in mind. Because of this, LTSC doesn't have annual build updates like regular builds of Windows. It doesn't come with most of the bloatware that Home and Pro come with, and it also has considerably lower system requirements. The system requirements are surprisingly minimal. A 64-bit dual-core processor, 1 gigahertz or faster, 2 gigabytes of RAM, and 16 gigabytes of storage. Unlike Windows 11 Home and Pro, there are no TPM or secure boot requirements, nor is there a specific list of approved processors. And while a Microsoft account is required, you can easily bypass it similar to how we did it in Windows 10. Simply disconnect your Ethernet cable or turn off your Wi-Fi during setup and you'll be able to create a local account. That's all there is to it. Another benefit of Windows LTSC is in the name Long-Term Servicing Channel. The current version, 24H2, will be supported in its current state for the next 10 years, whereas Windows 11 Home and Pro will only support the 24H2 build for three years and then you have to upgrade to the next build. For example, if you're still using Windows 11 23H2, support for that ends in November and you'll have to move to 24H2. But LTSC will be exactly like it is right now for the next 10 years. Microsoft releases a new version of LTC every few years, but you don't have to upgrade to it. You can still run this version for the next 10 years and be completely in the support window. Now, all software developers aren't going to keep making software that works with 24H2 for the next 10 years, but you can always upgrade to the next version of LTSC that comes out. In fact, Windows 10 LTSC won't lose support until 2032. So Microsoft will be making updates for Windows 10 after October of this year, just not for you. So today, we're going to install and explore a legitimate copy of Windows 11 LTSC. However, this will be the 90-day evaluation because 
The catch to all of this is in the licensing restrictions, which we'll discuss later. If you're following along and downloading LTSC, please do not install it on your primary Windows system at this time. Use a spare drive or a non-essential computer for the installation. Better yet, if you watched my last video, you can install it on a virtual machine like I'm going to do today. You did watch my last video, right? The first thing we need is the ISO, and to get the ISO, you're gonna have to go to the Windows 11 Enterprise LTSC website. I'll leave a link in the description. Let's head over there now. All right, I'm gonna jump over to Google and type in Windows 11 LTSC download. It's gonna bring you to this site here. It's also going to bring you to two versions. You have the 64 or AMD 64 edition and the ARM 64 edition. It is likely for most people, it will be the 64 or AMD 64 edition. If you are an individual that has an ARM processor, you probably know who you are. That's more common on mobile devices, Surface tablets, and some laptops. We're going for 64. Now, unlike the regular Windows 11, there will not be installation media and all that stuff. It's just going to download the ISO in the top right hand corner of my screen. Now I've actually already downloaded it so I'm going to cancel this download. But once yours completes you should have this very long named ISO here in your downloads folder. Okay, now, as I mentioned before, there are two ways to do this. You could mount this ISO from here and just run the setup, but you need to know that is going to wipe out your existing version of Windows. You cannot upgrade and you cannot go back. So again, I would like to stress, do not do this on your main computer. Someone will undoubtedly not watch the whole video and do that and then get mad at me in the comments. Now, the other way we're going to do that the way that I'm going to show you is with a USB flash drive so that you can do this on a different computer. Now that we have the ISO, there's a couple different ways you can install this. You can either install it directly from the ISO by just mounting it on the desktop and just overriding your existing operating system, or you can create a USB drive to install it. And that's what I'll demonstrate today. And for that, we will need our old friend Rufus. So let's go. Okay, we're gonna jump back into Google and we're going to go to Rufus. And in Rufus, I'm going to scroll down here. Now, since we do not need to use all of the Rufus features that bypass hardware requirements because there are none, you could actually use the new version of Rufus because those options have been removed from this newest version. They've just recently removed 4.6 from here, which is the one I prefer. You can go ahead and download this here, or I'm going to go to GitHub and grab 4.6 portable right here, which is my preferred version. So I'm going to download that. Do not click anywhere in this window here. Close that out. Please don't click in that window. Someone will do that too and then tell me Rufus gave them a virus. So now you should have the ISO and Rufus in your downloads folder. Now you want to plug in that USB flash drive to your computer. Once you have the flash drive plugged in, go ahead and run Rufus. So normally with Rufus, I allow it to check updates, but because I'm on the 4.6 version and I do not want to update, I'm going to tell it no. So on this screen, you just need to make sure that it's recognized your flash drive in the top here, which for me it has. Then we're gonna select that ISO that we just downloaded that's in our downloads folder. Now for me on this computer, Rufus has identified the GPT scheme because I do have a UEFI system. If you are creating this for a different computer, an older computer that does not have a UEFI system, you need to make sure that you change this to MBR or it will not boot on your non-UEFI system. I'm gonna leave everything else the same here and then I'm gonna click start. Now, Rufus automatically wants to remove the requirements for RAM, Secure Boot, TPMO, and for an online Microsoft account, but we don't actually have to do any of that here because this version of Windows doesn't have those requirements and we could easily bypass the Microsoft account. So I'm just gonna click OK. It will now warn me that all data on this device will be deleted. I'm gonna click OK. This is also warning me that I have multiple partitions on this drive blah 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 i'm gonna click ok and we have started creating the rufus drive i'll skip forward till rufus is done okay rufus is all ready 
Okay, now that you have the ISO, if you're going to do that method, but again, I would like to stress, please do not do that on a computer that matters and has your regular installation of Windows. This is just for testing. Now, if you created the USB drive with Rufus, at this point, we would boot from that USB drive. So with the USB drive inserted, you will restart your computer and then use whatever key gets you to your boot menu where you can boot from the flash drive. I'll put a graphic up on the screen of some of the most common ones. I am actually going to set this up on a virtual machine. It's exactly the same process no matter which way you do it. The virtual machine is just a lot easier and much better for testing. You should try it out. So either mount the ISO and start the installation, reboot to the Rufus drive, or use your virtual machine. Also don't forget to disconnect from the internet whether that's an ethernet cable or disabling your Wi-Fi. If you disconnect from the internet once you get to the Microsoft account screen, it will give you the option to bypass and set up a local account like the good old days. Let's go. Press any key to boot from CD. All right, from this screen, you'll just verify your language settings, change them if necessary. Click next. Keyboards US layout, click next. I'm gonna click this box to agree that everything will be deleted. I'm gonna accept the license agreement. Now for me, I'm on a virtual machine, so that 80 gigabyte hard drive that it's showing is my virtual machine, so I don't need to do anything but click next. You may need to come in here and delete older partitions until you get down to your main partition of unallocated space. If the flash drive shows that you used, don't delete that. Click next. Ready to install Windows 11 Enterprise. Ready to install. I'm gonna click install. This should all look familiar to you if you've ever installed Windows. If you wish to learn how to set up VirtualBox so you can install multiple operating systems for testing, just watch my last video. I will skip forward on these screens and meet you at the next one that requires input. Okay, now that we're at this screen, we'll go ahead and leave it at United States for me. Click yes. I'm gonna click yes here. I'm gonna skip adding a second layout. And there's that beautiful option of I don't have internet on a factory version of Windows 11. Imagine that. I'm going to enter a name here. I am not going to enter a password. And then next. Of course, we're going to turn off all of these privacy settings. Then we're going to click next. I will skip forward to the next screen. And here we go. Straight from Microsoft, no bloatware. If we go look at all apps, we have accessibility, calculator, file explorer, get started, edge, regular notepad, paint, settings, snipping tool, Windows backup, Windows tools, and that is it, nothing else. And you don't have to worry about future Windows updates, putting programs back on your computer because this version of Windows does not support feature updates, only critical and security updates. And as you can see down here in the bottom right corner, this is an evaluation version. And my display resolution is off because I am not connected to the internet. It can't update my video driver. But you see, you have a fully functional version of Windows 11 the way we would like to have it. All right, so let's talk about this version of Windows 11 directly from Microsoft that's completely de-bloated, doesn't have all of the updates we don't want, almost seems like the perfect operating system, right? So what's the catch? Well, the catch is in the licensing. So this is only available for volume licensing, meaning an individual like me or you can't purchase it. You have to know someone who can get you a volume license. Maybe you know an admin of a big company. Okay, obviously, there are ways around that 90 day evaluation that I do not condone and I can't show you on this channel because this video will get taken down. All I can tell you is Google is your friend. Could this be a daily driver? There is a lot of folks out there that certainly believe in that and use it for that. There was some concerns about was it good enough for gaming? And I went back and did a little research and saw some other channels. You can find these on YouTube where they compare gaming on this version of Windows 11 versus Homer Pro. Another downside, as I mentioned before, is that this is both a good thing and a bad thing that you could literally use this operating system in this condition for the next 10 years. 
and it really doesn't become a problem except for software developers out there that may not necessarily continue to make stuff compatible with 2.4 H2. But like I said, every couple of years, they will come out with a new version of LTSC, so you can always upgrade. Okay, so let me have it in the comments. I know they're coming for this one. Everybody has an opinion. Tell me if this is something that you would consider as a daily driver as an option for the upcoming end of support for Windows 10, because we just took a look at the Windows 11 version of this. There is a Windows 10 version out there that will continue getting support well beyond October. If you just don't want to get away from Windows 10, maybe that's an option for you. It really makes me mad that the operating system that we want from Microsoft is there. They just don't want us to have it. If you found value in this video, please like and share the video and subscribe to the channel. Subscribing to the channel helps me out tremendously. It helps the channel grow and it enables me to keep bringing you videos just like this on a weekly basis. Be sure to check out these other videos. Go back and watch that last video on how to set up and use a virtual machine. And you can set this up on a virtual machine and you won't need to use a separate computer or different drive. Easy. And as always, thank you for watching and until next time.